Hey everybody, Tim Brzezinski here. In this screencast, I'm going to show you how to use the iReady number line tool, which can be found in the digital math tool section of the iReady teacher toolbox. We'll look at some examples from iReady Classroom here in which we could use this pretty powerfully. Help students model, all right? So you have a number line here. Default starts are 0 to 10. Again, there's a couple tools here. You could plot points on there, click a dot, drag it around, right? You can move it wherever you want uh, on that number line. Okay, you can also change start and end. So if I want to start at one, I can start at one. You get the gist, right? You could change the increments here if you want. But let's actually take a look at uh, this model here. We'll model this one out. All right. Uh, Morgan and Ann uh, own a sheep farm. Uh, one sh uh, shears sheep every six months, another every eight months. And so both herds were sheared this month. And how many months will they shear their herds again in the same month? All right, so obviously we're talking about least uh, common multiple here. So yes, 48 would work, six times eight, but let's actually go to 48 here, let's see. All right, we could do that. Or let's make it 50, why not? All right, but now we wanna increment, say, let's increment by, uh, we'll increment by five, all right? Or maybe, uh, let's sec, we'll start at 48. I don't know, and let's, um, now, we can actually throw some increments on here, these jumps. Let's go here to the jump there, right? And we could actually add one. You see what I mean? This allows us to uh, change the size of the gump. We can, we can start and stop wherever we want, all right? So every six, now six is here. See how it did it right there? Now we can go ahead and just copy it and keep going every six months. That's what uh, Morgan does, right? So at least up to like say 48, right? But let's actually, um, let's see if we can actually make this a little lower here now. Let's actually go to 30, maybe this is better. And uh, let's go by twos. See, to me, that makes a little bit more sense, All right? We obviously know 48 will be, 48 months from now will be a, a common month, but maybe there's one that's less, All right? So, uh, and then Anne does it every eight months. So if we want to put another jumper on here, we could just hit another jumper and model it, All right? And now we just got to bring it back to zero for the same month. And we'll click on this white square over here to make it eight. All right, and then we could go ahead and uh, hit that copy icon to copy that jump. See? One, two, three, four, five, right? And so we can see. Now down here, you'll see the, this gray, um, these like circles here. You can actually drag along to just see it and change it. But let's see. Not in month six or eight, not in month 12, not in 16, but it looks like, ooh, they both reach, uh, they both reach 24 there, don't they? So it looks like uh, the answer is 24 months, which is the least common multiple of, um, of those two values there. So you see here, this, um, this tool can help us actually make sense of, of that. But that's not all. We can do a whole lot more with this. All right, let's refresh it. And let's actually uh, solve some application problems that are in iReady where, you know, they have it uh, there, right? Multi-step problems. I think this is from grade three or four. I forget. But on the test, Lola scores six points on each of the first three questions and four points on the remaining two, right? So obviously a number line model is a great way to, to model this here. So let's go, I don't know, let's take a guess, zero to 30 again, right? And let's increment by, let's increment by twos, right? Same thing. So now we could turn, uh, we could turn this, we could actually put a, uh, uh, a jumper, a jump on there. But now notice how the label is missing. If you want to show the label, you got to hit this icon right here, all right? So we'll turn it on. And it says here, we could change the start value. She starts at zero and she scores six points on the first question and on each of the uh, first three. And then after that, she scores four points on each of the other two. So we can hit, an, hit this for another jumper, another jump, and then we wanna make that a, a four, right? And so we can go one, two, three, four, right? And then we could just copy that how many times? Uh, so one more, there we go. Three sixes, two fours, looks like it makes 26. Okay, so um, there we go. All right, so now let's take, uh, let's take a look at uh, another one here. Here we're actually going backwards, let's refresh. All right, so here we have Garrett getting paid $4 for every hour he babysits. Miss Becker pays him for five hours of babysitting, right? And then Garrett spends nine dollars on a book and six bucks on a puzzle. So how much money uh, does he have left from Mrs. Becker when she paid him? Now this problem is asking him to write an equation, but, but even before students do that, that's kind of abstract for kids. Let's model it conceptually on a number line first and see what we can do. 
Four dollars for each hour he babysits. So we'll add a jump. Remember here, we show the label for the jump right there. All right, and then um, let's see. Six, and then so four dollars each hour he babysits right there. She pays him for five hours. So we're gonna have to go out here to at least 20, right? So let's make it, uh, let's do a 30 again. There we go, maybe we could scale by twos. So you see it there. So five hours, right? Four times five is 20. Hopefully students know that by now, but for those that still need to see it, there we go. All right, now on the way home, Garrett spends $9 on a book. Well, we could put a, we could put one in here. So now we're starting at 20, right? But we could actually go backwards here. And when we do, it'll actually turn red. Check it out. See, we're going back now, like negatives are red. So six, seven, eight, nine, right? We're at 11, right? And he spends $6 on a book. So he's losing more money there. So let's go right here. And when that's in getting six bucks, so now he loses $6. And already we see the digital tells us it looks like, whoop, looks like the answer is five. Okay, he must have five bucks uh, left over. I mean, four times five is 20, nine, six is 15, and 20 minus 15 is five, right? So again, uh, jumping here to the number line could be a great way for students to conceptually see that uh, first, if that makes sense, all right? Um, well, let's take a look uh, here. We also, we can also have minor ticks here, but um, again, we have to get, we have to go a little smaller, like say three. And right here we could, even still it's not good enough, but um, let's go to one, right? Now we can increment by one tenth. See how the, the minor ones, we could turn the label on and off. For here, the majors, we could turn the label on and off, right? We could also change decimals to fractions. This is powerful. We'll do this in the last one I'll show you here, right? Um, so let me refresh all together. And we'll do one more problem for my ready. All right, and that's this one. All right, this is a math in action lesson. Um, so we're, we're building, we have an eight mile trail at the Welcome Center. We find, uh, what does it say here, trail plans. So we wanna plant trees along the trail every fraction of a mile. We need to use a, a unit fraction greater than one eighth, but less than one half. Okay, so, um, and look at what we have right here. We need to draw a number line from zero to eight. Well, we can do that here if we wanted to, right? That's done. Divide the sections between whole numbers to show your fractions. We got that done too. Label each mark with a whole number fraction. It's labeled, but now let's actually, uh, let's actually find the fraction that's uh, between one eighth and one half. Now here I can only, let me put on the fraction bar here. See what I mean? Right there. Now let's just now look at this. This here, I mean, it, it went back from zero to one, but I see one eighth is here, one half is here. So we could choose any one of these. I mean, hopefully students could choose what quarter, right? And now if I go back to eight, oh, it actually bumps it up to one half there, right? Because it can't also get squished on the same screen. But what if we went to four instead? And just think of doubling it. Now we could do it by quarters, right? And we'll use this number, we could drag along, remember we could drag along the number line here with the greatest C but we can actually uh, go ahead and uh, put on um, a marker here, see how it's fractional right now. And so that's eight over four, which is two, but see how we have one fourth here. And we can copy this to the cows come home, right? And we can just go ahead and, and start modeling here. Or we can build other arrangements as well. What about thirds? What about sixths, right? What would work? What would be ideal? You see what I mean? So that's uh, kind of how this tool works. You could zoom in to zoom in. You could zoom out to zoom out right here. You can doodle all over the graph, make some notes, la-di-da. -da, you see what I mean? Um, but yeah, you could plot points on here. You could drag points along there. I think I showed it this at the beginning. If I didn't, that's what you can do. Um, but yeah, so uh, again, you have decimals, you have fractions there. See how it actually changes the decimals, 25 hundredths or one quarter, all right? A lot you could do here with modeling on a number line. So just wanted to show you this and hope you find this helpful.